The ship never stays still, the ship moves constantly. And we use a dynamic positioning system to, to keep the ship within a certain percentage of the water depth. Additionally, we have a, a heave compensation system, which actually allows for vertical and horizontal offset from the, from the seafloor. Because any horizontal offset actually does transmit into, into a different length of drill string, so vertical offset as well. And the heave compensator is a passive system that acts much like the shock absorbers on a car. When you see it working, you'll see the, the big pistons going in and out. We, uh, we actually support the entire weight of the drill string with air. When we are actually drilling, it, it looks like the pipe's moving up and down. But in actual fact, the pipe is stationary and the ship's moving around it. It, it, it takes a while to get your head around that, especially when you see it at first. Um, but yeah, basically it's just a giant air cushion uh, that, that operates above us as part of the equipment in the derrick. And it just ensures that the bit stays on the bottom no matter what we do. You know, we, we drill, we have a drill bit on the end of a very long pipe and that has a physical weight. And we use some of that weight to actually push onto the bit and, and drill the hole. So uh, if we put too much weight on, the, even though the string is steel and you think of it as a, you know, we think of steel as being nice and strong, when you've got a 5,000 metre long piece of it, it's literally like spaghetti in the water. So it twists and turns and bows and buckles uh, if, you don't, if you don't treat it right, if you're a bit rough with it. The drill string itself is hollow. We pump fluid down it. And that fluid on this rig is, is just seawater, but it, it cools the drill bit um, and it lubricates the, the hole, and so, and, and, but more importantly, it flushes out the drilled material, yeah. So basically, you know, it's like if you drill a hole in a piece of wood, you get sawdust out. Well, we call the rock that we get out cuttings, so it flushes the cuttings out, so we get a nice clean hole. Um, there's different drilling strategies. There's something called APC coring, which is essentially taking a straw and like poking it into, into jello, so you build up pressure and just poke into the hole and that gives you beautiful cores but you can't do it as soon as the sediment starts getting hard then you can switch over to something called xcb which you start turning and drilling and um, if things are good then you get a really nice core but and sometimes it, it does what's called biscuity and breaks the whole core up and it, and it looks terrible and then there's the old-fashioned way called rotary coring um, which most people try to avoid which takes the big bit and just sort of drills right into the material and, and goes down. And um, the problem with rotary coring, you can't use the same pipe. And so if you start drilling with one, one of those sets of methods, and you suddenly switch over, you gotta pull the entire pipe back up to the surface, rebuild it, put it all the way down. We came to the decision because we wanted to go down to about 800 meters below the seafloor, which is, which is quite far, and at around 350, Suddenly, well, about 200 meters, the APC cut out on us, so we couldn't push ahead anymore. And then we went into the XCB mode, and that just started cracking all the sediment. So now we're stuck. So do we keep on going down and, and just cracking the sediment all the way to 800 meters, or do we say, huh, you know, let's pull the whole pipe, waste and burn an entire day, and come back into rotary drilling, and then hope that works. And so we sat here for, you know, quite some time thinking back and forth. Yeah, this is a major gamble um, yeah. because once we pulled the pipe and, and went back down with rotary, if the rotary was worse than the other stuff, and then, then we're in big problems. Um, so we took the gamble and, and for whatever reason, in the, that particular uh, sediment sequence, the rotary coring just worked beautifully and we just suddenly got these absolutely, just truly gorgeous cores. That's, this is easy money. Core after core, they're all good. looking pretty good. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, sediment in this core, so that's great, always good. So with this rotary coring, we're getting a lot better recovery and um, we're getting less disturbed sections now that we're in kind of harder rocks, so that's good. We have relatively full cores, at least at this point, with, um, with nice uh, layering preserved. So this is what we're coring right now. This is beautiful uh, limestone that's got uh, all sorts of banding in it, um, but it's yeah, it's mostly uh, calcareous limestone. Absolutely great cores, as you can see, just the, the detail. 